we know the profit down there would be uh, 5 times 6 plus 7 times 0, or 30. So we know automatically that this solution up here on the vertical axis is superior to this one down here. We're still not so sure about this solution or this possible solution. I'm pretty sure this corner point down here in the bottom left is not optimal because it yields zero profit. But these are our corner points, and we know one of those will be the optimal solution. Okay? There's kind of a shortcut to figuring out exactly which of those points is the optimal. And that shortcut involves graphing the objective function. So I'm going to do that real quick. So we're going to graph the objective function. And if you're a math person, you probably are scratching your head saying, we can't graph that. It is not equal to anything. And you would be correct. <coughs> well, what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal to something. And what you set it equal to is completely up to you. But you want to be able to uh, easily divide uh, these coefficients into that number. So one thing I could do, and it's pretty simple, is take the, uh, the product of those two coefficients and just go 5 times 7, and of course that's 35. And now when I do my little t thing that I do, x1, x2, x1 equals 0, x2 then equals 5, and if x2 equals 0, then x1 equals 7. So if you choose the product of the coefficients, you get some simple math out of the deal. But you could have chosen 50, you could have chosen 1,000, you could have chosen 3, whatever you want. Um, but that's going to give you a set of coordinates uh, that you can then graph. So where x1 equals 0 and x2 equals 5, that's this spot right here. And where, uh, let's see, x2 equals 0 x1 equals 7 is this spot kind of right there, and I can connect those dots. Okay? And there you go. Now, if I had chosen, let's say, instead of 35, had I chosen 70, my, my coordinates would be different, right? Had I chosen 70 arbitrarily instead of 35, Again, you might be doing this in your head, but x1 is 0, 7 times something equals 70. That would be 10. If x2 is 0, 5 times, um, let's see, 14 equals 70. So I get a new set of coordinates at, uh, let's see, x1 equals 0, x2 equals 10. It would be up here. I don't even have a spot for it on the axis. And down here where 14 is would be 11, 12, 13, 14, about right out here. And I'd get a line way out here. Okay? Now, the bigger the number I've chosen here, the further away from the origin. We, I don't know that I've used that word, but the origin is this spot down here in the corner, the 0, 0 coordinates. Okay? So the bigger the number, the further away. That's something to, to remember. The smaller the number, the closer I am. Okay? So I obviously, because this is a maximization problem, I want to be as far away as possible. And you'll notice something else, that this first green line is parallel to the second green line. And whatever number you choose, whether it's 35 or 70 or 311, whatever you choose, you'll graph a line that is parallel to these lines. And also, the bigger the number you choose, the further away from the origin you'll be. So the name of the game here is to be far away from the origin, as far away as possible, because we're maximizing. So right here, my profit is 35. When I say right here, at this first line I drew. And up here, profit is um, 70. So what I want you to do is I want you to visually move the line keeping it parallel, in your mind, visually move that line out as far away as possible. And I typically take a piece of paper, if, if, I, if I could do it with the technology I have, I would take a piece of paper and I move it out, push it out, keeping it parallel, 
And the last place it touches in the feasible solution space before uh, leaving the feasible solution space is going to be my optimal solution. And that is this point right here. Okay? So this point right here, that is my optimal solution point. So that holds the answer. That tells me exactly where uh, it is optimal in terms of maximizing 5x1 plus 7x2 given these constraints. Okay? I can eyeball that and I can see that x1 is approximately 4 and x2 is approximately 4. It's kind of tough to, to see exactly. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to solve using those two constraint lines. I'm going to want to solve for the value at that point right there. Okay? And that's what I'll, that's what I'll do next. Let me erase some stuff so I have a little bit of room to work. And I'm going to do something called simultaneously solving a couple of equations. And you may or may not remember this from your uh, high school algebra class. But what I've got to do first is I've got to, I've got to recognize which two constraints are intersecting uh, at that particular point. And you'll notice it's not the x1 less than or equal to 6 constraint because that was the, verti or that was, yeah, the vertical line you see on the graph. So it's not this one. It's not this one. It's these bottom two. Those two constraints are intersecting uh, right there at that point that is optimal. So another way to look at that is it's these two constraints that are keeping me from making more money. It's not this x1 must be less than or equal to 6 constraint. That's not preventing me from making my objective function larger. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write these two constraints, 2x1 plus 3x2, and I'm going to write them as a, as a line. I'm just going to say equals 19, and now I'm going to put uh, x1 plus x2 equals 8. And the idea here is to subtract one from the other, and in doing so eliminate one of the decision variables. Well. To do that, you need the same coefficient in front of either x1 or x2. And I don't have that immediately. So what I'm going to do in this situation, there's a couple of things I could do. But one easy thing I could do is I could multiply the second constraint line by 2. And, and that's going to give me 2x1 plus 2x2 equals 16. Let me tell you, that is exactly the same equation. It's like saying, you know, three cars have 12 tires. Another way I could say that is, you know, five cars have 20 tires. So these two, uh, these two are the same thing. So I can, I can forget about this one and just focus on the, the new one. And now when I subtract that, I'm going to subtract this entire constraint, the bottom one from the top one, and I'm going to say 2x1 minus 2x1 is 0. I'm going to say 3x2 minus 2x2 is 1 x2. So I've got 0 plus 1x2. In fact, I can, I can just delete that part. And 19 minus 16 is 3. So I've got x2 equals 3. So I've solved exactly where x2 is. And my, the reason it doesn't look like it's supposed to be there is my graph is a little sloppy. If I was using graph paper, then things would look a little better. Now what I do now is I can plug that x2 equals 3 into either equation and I'll get the result for x1. So I can say 2x1 plus 2 times 3 equals 16. Okay, let's do that. 2x1 plus 2 times 3, because I now know what x2 is, equals 16. So that means 2x1 plus 6 equals 16. I'm going to subtract 6 from either side, and I'm, and I'm going to get 2x1 equals 10, and therefore x1 equals 5. I just divided it each side by 2, so x1 becomes 5. So x1 is 5. That's this spot right here. So now I know the solution. x2 equals 3, and x1 equals 5. Let me write that solution down here x1 equals 5, 
uh, x2 equals 3. Okay. Now, <clears throat> could I have plugged that into the top constraint, the 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 19? Absolutely. In fact, something to test that is we, we should make sure that particular uh, solution works in that first constraint. So 2 times 5 plus 3 times 3, that's 10 plus 9, equals 19. So it's working. The reason it works is, if you look at this, this dot we have found is a dot that exists on both lines. So if we plug that coordinate into either constraint, the constraint line should yield uh, a truth. In other words, 2 times 5 plus 3 times 3 should, in fact, equal 19. And 2 times 5 plus 2 times 3 should, in fact, equal 16. Okay? And there you go. You have graphically solved a linear programming problem. Uh, we do this not because you're going to be graphically solving linear programming problems at your job, but what this does is it helps you understand visually what your computer does. What Microsoft Excel does is it identifies something analogous to these corner points, and then it goes through an algorithm, a, uh, an intelligent search, if you will, of those corner points that, uh, that leads to an optimal solution in, in sort of the same way we've done it. Now, Excel can handle more than two decision variables, and a graphically uh, solving a problem cannot because there's only two dimensions on, on a page. So uh, Excel, uh, if, you can, if you will, picture this multidimensional space, and things get pretty complicated quickly. But there, there is a similarity in how Microsoft Excel Solver and how other, um, how other solutions uh, or software like Lingo go about finding solutions. OK? OK, that's all for this for this uh, rather lengthy video. I hope you find that helpful.